When you're young, a trauma might happen to you, and at first, you may not understand, or you might think that you can handle it, that you can just let it go. But this is the first time that it's happened to you. And then your mind dwells on the events, and later on, gradually you realize what happened. But it's too late to turn back. So the trauma grows heavier and heavier as you realize that this was a once in a lifetime opportunity to do something about it, to stand up for yourself, to fight back, to use your voice, but you didn't. You hesitated. When you go through something horrible like child abuse or sexual abuse or something overwhelming like bullying over the long term or a terrible betrayal or being cheated on, tradition says that you're supposed to speak out, to fight back, to take revenge. But when we fail to do this, we suffer even more. And for us, it's just too much to handle, too much to let go all at once. This is what life is like without proper holistic healing practices for the mind. Our minds are so conditioned that the only way to feel better is if we do something just as bad to the other person. But we need other ways and better ways to heal. Because traumas are very common. Most of the time, we're helpless. The good news is, there is a solution. There is one great benefit and necessity in suffering. That is spiritual growth. Nobody wants to undergo trauma. Nobody wants to admit that they carry a miserable past that ruined their childhood for almost a decade or longer. But remember, the only way to progress spiritually, the only way to grow the conscience is to remove the conditioning that it carries. And that process is always painful. Any creature or soul with a conditioned mind, with ego, carries karma. And when we pay that karma, we do so through suffering. This is something we should be grateful for. The Buddha said that all pain comes from desire, and all happiness comes from serving others. For many lifetimes, we have put energy into motion by feeding desire, so that's why we feel the consequences of our previous actions. His Holiness the Dalai Lama interviewed a monk who was exiled from Tibet after the Chinese had invaded. This monk was imprisoned for 15 years and beaten and tortured. He went through the conflict and struggles of that time and place. The Dalai Lama asked, what was your greatest danger when in prison? And the monk's response was, losing my compassion for the Chinese. So you can imagine how devoted he was to maintaining upright view and love and compassion for others in such a treacherous time of his life. And somewhere in the interview, Dalai Lama said to the monk that it would have been easier to practice spirituality in that prison than to practice here at home at the meditation retreat. When I first began meditating on my youth trauma, after a few insights, my intuition told me through dream text, the consciousness needs something to feel. And Master Samuel explained a similar thing. A mind that is at service of one's real being results in an effective instrument. The mind is made to be receptive, not as an active instrument. If someone hurts us, we must not permit the mind to react. Wish that there will always be someone who can hurt us in our feelings daily, so we can in that way train our mind better to be passive. The more insults we receive, the better for our training. Keep in mind the pain of paying karma doesn't last very long. When you compare it to the millions of lives you've already lived, enlightenment can be attained in one life after all. You're watching this video because you already went through the pain of childhood trauma, and that's 
one of the worst experiences most people go through these days. So now that you're almost past that, it's just a matter of digesting those impressions from the past so that you can move forward again. We all have to work on ourselves at some point. How can you work on your pride if you've been feeding it your whole life and can't remember any time when you didn't stand up for yourself or embarrass yourself? How can you work on your sorrow and grief if you've never failed miserably at something or lost a loved one? Meditation is the right thing to do. It is the proper way to heal the mind. It is the way our mind was intended to function, with serenity and alertness. Meditative comprehension expands the consciousness. As your awareness expands, a lot of amazing things happen. You begin to see the bigger picture in life and find it easier to prioritize the things that really matter to you. And for more dedicated students of spirituality, these struggles and ordeals are what you want. You want these ordeals so that you can become more and more resilient to the dramas and difficulties of life. Because really, the consciousness itself has no preference towards things. It only perceives, and it does so with indifference and tranquility. This state of unconditioned consciousness is called samadhi. It is a state in which we perceive everything objectively, free from the distractions and defects like pride, hatred, lust, fear, addiction. Samadhi states are possible to attain in meditation for brief periods of time, and with more training, you can learn to access it regularly at will. Samadhi is the highest state of consciousness a person can experience in meditation. So if you manage to reach it at some point in your practice, you will receive enormous benefit. Your perception and understanding will be impeccable. Everything in your life will make sense, and you will rapidly accelerate your healing. Now with all that being said, I should mention that you will not eliminate all of your pride and anger and sorrow and depression at once by doing this. This work is a process that requires successive comprehension. You may reach a point in which you've received all the insights and wisdom you needed, but still feel slight and occasional resentment or brooding. At this stage, you may have to just give your meditation practice a break and be content with what you received. I bring this up because this happened to me. I meditated so relentlessly on my trauma that I reached a point where I was told in meditation that my own defects of ruthlessness and anger were trying to kill themselves and other egos. So in other words, I was being ruthless in my practice. You have to realize that only consciousness and energy can eliminate defects. Defects do not extirpate other defects. So if you practice with excessive determination, stubbornness, frustration, and attachment, then you will likely struggle. In my case, I was already provided the answers I needed to move on. I was basically told in different ways to let go because it was the right thing to do. I understood this intellectually, but by persisting in meditation and asking for more help, this showed that I didn't comprehend it. What this means is, once you receive the answers you need, you have to actually follow them in order to progress. With this practice, you'll never have to find yourself looking back and considering asking your ex-partner, why did you do this and why did you say that? What was that all about? Because you will be able to find the answers yourself. So cherish your insights and keep referring back to them. Follow them. Stick to them. They are true and they are beautiful. I will admit, letting go of traumas using transmutation is easier said than done. We lived our whole lives protecting our pride and always arguing and fighting back with people who mistreat us. But this is the old paradigm of mankind, and it has only made things worse. 
Nothing good can come out of revenge and violence and weapons. Our problems are so pervasive that in this day and age, most of us have little choice but to liberate ourselves in a more conscious way. It wasn't until seven years later when I finally discovered these healing practices. And adjusting to them wasn't easy either because what I was doing wasn't part of my plan and it felt really unconventional. Most people in the West just solve their problems on the spot by protecting their pride and complaining or retaliating against someone. But I had no choice but to become spiritual since my problem was in the past and there was nothing I could do to change it. The counselor said that only I know what's right at the end of the day. They could not remove my stubborn pride from me. They could only give me support. But meditation, on the other hand, destroyed my defects of pride and anger. It was hard for me to get used to the idea that there was this miraculous way to heal from all types of psychological suffering. And if you don't like the phrase, letting go, having to let go of something, really, what you're doing is you're transmuting. You're transmuting impressions, and you're comprehending. Transmutation means to change thoroughly. So when we're struggling with something like a trauma, our energy is blocked in different parts of the mind and body. When we transmute impressions, we use various exercises to move energy around, release tension, and transform negative emotions and thoughts into their lighter forms. And this can be done in many ways, as long as we are focusing our attention on the negative impressions and using the exercises to release tension. Activities like dancing, singing, shouting, exercising, listening to music, and making art are all conducive to unblocking and transmuting energy. But for people who are very serious about energy work and transmutation, more advanced and specialized practices have been provided to us by ancient religions like Hinduism. The most common and effective ones include Hatha Yoga, Pranayama, Dream Yoga, and Meditation and Prayer. And the highest and most sacred practices, Tibetan Rites for Rejuvenation and Tantra. To learn these proper integral healing techniques, Refer to my videos, End Suffering, How to Meditate, or simply How to Meditate, and Meditation and the Eight Limbs of Yoga.